welcome to Light Embassy, taking his glory to the ends of the world. This morning's devotion is titled, You are not going to get God to agree with you. You are not going to get God to agree with you. And the theme scripture is taken from the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 89. It says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. When scripture says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven, it means that God is never going to change his mind on his word. That is, you are never going to find God with a different state of mind or thinking from his word. He and his word are always one, inseparable. Now, the word of God is the articulation of the mind of God. The word of God is that God's articulating his knowledge. The word of God is God's articulating his wisdom. The word of God is God's articulating his thoughts. So the word of God is inseparable from God. If God has, some, has said something concerning the Christian with regards to any situation, that will forever be his position on the matter. The patience and long-suffering of God doesn't mean God changing his mind to agree with man. God is not going to agree with man. Man is supposed to agree with God. The patience of God is he waiting on man to agree with his word and ways. This is what Peter meant by saying, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9 God's love shouldn't be misconstrued as he accepting anything churned out by man. His love and tolerance is he waiting on man to repent. The Lord Jesus said the following to the church of Thyatira in the book of Revelation. He said, Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which called herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Revelation chapter 2 verse 22. Beloved, you have to understand Contrary to what some of these grace preachers, extreme grace preachers, have been preaching, now there are many who have preached the grace message excellently, but there are also others who have gone out of the way, preaching what the word didn't say. And now we have in a church and certain circles of Christianity where a Christian will be fornicating or even is, is in a there's a gay homosexual in the church, and the pastor will say, it's okay for God to understand because it's grace. Let's give him room because of grace. God accept us as we are because of grace. That is what they are teaching in, in certain churches. You, that man of God, preaching that such, such messages, do you understand grace than the Lord Jesus himself? Beloved, don't let anyone deceive you. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the one who is grace himself, Paul calls it the grace of what? Of our Lord Jesus Christ. Grace himself warned the, a church in Tyre, Christians, not unbelievers, Christians, he warned them. He warned Christians who were in fornication and all kinds of sins. He warned them they were in fornication, committing adultery. The law didn't say that because of grace, what you are doing is okay or is acceptable. No. What did he say to them? The master said, And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. 
Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her, into a great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. He says that except they repent of their deeds, he was going to cast these Christians into great tribulation. He didn't say because of grace, it was acceptable. He didn't say so. And this letter was written to the church. When you read the first chapter, it says that he told John, write this and send it to or unto the seven churches in Asia Minor. He didn't say you should send it to unbelievers. It was to the church. And then he goes on and says, unto the church of Thyatira, write. That's what the master said. Grace said that, except you repent of the fornication or adultery, there will be consequences. So grace does not mean that God accepts anything. Contrary to what many have made others to believe, that is not what grace means. There was going to be consequences to those Christians if they didn't repent. Grace doesn't mean anything is acceptable, no. But grace gives room for repentance. Like Peter said, God is not long suffering towards God, us, but He is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So when you see Him being very tolerant and long suffering, He knows that what is coming is so serious. The vengeance of the Lord is something so terrifying, something that no man wants to be part of. And that's why he gives so much room for man to repent, including wayward Christians. He gives them room for, to repent because he knows that what is coming in the future is very terrifying. It's very terrifying. It's very terrifying. This is why it's important for every Christian to stick to what the Word of God says and not necessarily the assumptions and traditions of men. The fact that it sounds nice to you or makes you happy doesn't necessarily mean that God agrees with you. God will forever agree with his word. And that's why the psalmist said, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. The Bible says, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. 1 John chapter 5, verse 7. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost are one. God bless you.